today we're going to demo Mongoose, and uh, we're just going to start up a brand new project for this. So let's open up a terminal here. What do I need to do when I'm starting a project? Init minus y. Okay, got my package.json. What else do I want to do? npm i express cjs mongoose. Yeah, great. Let's install all the dependencies that we need in one shot. So we'll say express. We know we're going to need that. We're also going to be using EJS just for our templating stuff. We need Mongoose, obviously, because that's the thing that we're demoing today. And then um, there's one other thing that I want to bring in. And this will allow us to actually view our form submission data. So we're going to bring this thing in called Body Parser. What happened here? Oh, you know what? The name of my project is, is not good. So notice how it doesn't like this because I named my project Mongoose. So let me, I'll just change inside here. We'll just call this Mongoose Demo. All right. Okay, and so while we're doing this, let's just, let's uh, create a basic server. And that's already done, so that's kind of nice. So we'll just say server.js. What do I usually want to bring inside my server? Express. Wire Express. Okay, and then I need to actually create an app, right? So we'll say const app equals the in the result of invoking express. And then what do I always need to do at the bottom? Listen on a specific port. I'll just say 3000. Okay. Now, um, I don't yet have any routes. Maybe we should create just a basic index route, right? Before I do that, though, I'm going to set the view engine. So we want to tell Express we're using this view engine called EJS. So let's say app.set view engine. And that's going to be EJS. Then here, I'm going to set where I want my views to be. So we'll say views. And then I'm going to do my dir name. Plus, some, let, let's say we just create a views folder. And I'll create that in a second. So we'll just go forward slash views. That's where I want them to be. And then up in here, we'll create a little views folder. I'm going to create index.html initially just so I can get some boilerplate in there. And we'll just call this, let's see, whoops. The Emmet uh, shortcut still work if it's an EJS extension? Yeah, but does it work on, uh, let, me t let me test this real quick. So if I don't save that, so let's say I change this to EJS. Does it work on just putting the exclamation point in there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah, all right. I'll be darned. Yeah, I didn't need to do that. Okay, thanks for the tip on that. So here, we'll just say Dojo's demo. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to create a little project where we're just showing some different Dojo's and we're showing what the capacity of those Dojo's is. All right? So we've got Dojo's demo here, and then here in the server, I've set my views to that. Now let's just create a basic route. So we'll say app.get <laughs> forward slash. And again, I'm going to have this request and response. So I'm going to go res.render that specific template. So we're just going to say index. Oops, I'm doing double quotes. Index. Okay, cool. Anything else I need to do to, to at least get this thing on, on screen? You guys catch me if there is. I'm relying on you. It's all good though, right? We can at least just load up that index page and we'll see what we're expecting. So let's go node mon server.js. Okay, and then if I go here. Oh, jeez, where is my Chrome? 
Let's go to localhost 3000. Okay, Dojo's demo, so we've got our page on the screen, so that's nice. However, um, what we're what we're demoing today is going to be Mongoose, so obviously we probably need to bring that into our server, right? Before we do that, let's actually use body parser. So we'll say body parser, and I'm going to require that as well. Okay, now after I've created my app and before I hit any of my routes, I can say app.use. So this means that no matter what route gets hit underneath this, we're always going to use body parser up here just for parsing form data that comes through. Yes? Now with the body parser, you can pick that stuff up and it kept popping up to use it. Why exactly do we need it if you're able to pull that response body um, out of just the basic express stuff anyway? I think that that's a recent development. You may be right that we don't need it at all, so let's just skip it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's true now that you can do it without body parser. So let's, let me just dump this for a second. If we run into any problems, then we'll know what it is, but let's just say that we don't have to use it. We used to have to add body parser right. in so that we could parse form data. So that's good, that'll make our jobs a little bit easier. Okay. So. <laughs> So on this page, what I want to have is basically two things. I'm going to have a list of dojos, and then we could do that in a table if we want. And then underneath that, I'm just going to have a form. Or we could do it vice versa. We've got the form on top, list underneath. doesn't really matter too much. OK, so down here, let's just create a form. And then inside that form, let's just drop in a couple um, Actually, no, I'm going to do this a little differently. Let me see if this works. Input group. Oh, it does work. Cool. I created a little snippet in VS Code so that I can always create inputs like this. And it will actually take me to these spots that I want to go. Like, I want to actually put something in the label. And then when I tap next, it's going to take me to the type of the input. The next tab will take me to the name. It just creates, you know, makes your job a little bit easier. Okay, so the label on this is just going to be name, and then the name is actually going to be, actually it should be location, right? Okay, and then um, the second one, oops, the second one is going to be the capacity of that specific dojo. Okay, so we'll say capacity, type is going to be a number name is going to be capacity. Okay, and then I'll change this up. Whoa, what just happened? I lost my stuff. Okay, so this was location. Location. And then I just need a submit button. Submit. Okay, what else do I need for this form here? So I need the action and the method. So we'll say the action is just going to be I'm going to do a post request to Dojo's method. All right. And let's go back to our page and see if this is rendering. OK, there it is. <coughs> so weird that the, the actual boxes for the inputs don't even show up. It's still on, the projector. Yeah, it's just the projector on that. But there are inputs there, rest assured. So we'll, we'll be able to add some stuff. OK, and then down below, Let's just create a little table where we can actually iterate through our uh, the dojos that we have. So let's say, how do we how do we iterate inside um, inside EJS? You guys remember for a for loop? Is that what you said? Okay. So what's the syntax of this thing? Uh huh. Right. So yeah, we could just we could just do something like let dojo of dojos, right? Um, and then we'll open up a little curly brace, and then you can go like this if you want to close it off down below, which we do. We also want to open it up. Whoops. Okay, and then I just need to close this up here. 
So before I run that loop, let's say we're going to do a table. So we're going to go table, I'm going to do a T head, and then a T row. And then inside that T row, I'm just going to have a couple things. I'm going to have the location name and then the capacity. So we'll do TH times 2. And then I want to go up two levels. And then I want to go into the T bot. <laughs> I saw some heads shaking there. What's going on here? What? <laughs> What's happening? All right, so this is, I'm gonna I'm gonna use Emmet autocomplete to make my job a lot easier because I don't want to you know go through all that process. Wait, have you guys yeah, not I mean, seen I, this? I, I can follow. I just I never seen one that long. Guys, haven't seen this yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like morally magic. Just watch right. what happens. Yeah, yeah, so it's gonna be great once we actually yeah, put this thing out. So we created a table. We went inside that. We created a T head. Inside that, we've got a table row. Inside that, we have two T hit T H elements. And then I went up two more levels so that I got back inside my table, T body with one T rail, and then two table data elements. Now watch. Woohoo! And now I can even tab through these guys too, which makes it even better. So I can just say location, capacity. And then here I'm gonna I'm basically just gonna bring in my loop. That's gonna that's gonna surround these T rows, right? Where did I put it? Oh, it's down here. So let's just drag this up. So that's gonna surround these T rows. So I can just bring the T row inside there. All right. So inside here, what do I want to output? Mm-hmm. So we'll, so we'll say dojo.location, like that. And then underneath, I can say dojo.capacity, right? OK. So we're in pretty good shape. The only thing is now when we, when we try to hit this page on the front end, I'm going to have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. What's my problem? Because I haven't yet passed in dojos. Yeah, so we have some sort of a, uh, of a reference error, right? Okay. So let's just, for now, let's just pass in something that's empty, just so that we can still see the page. So when we hit the index, let's pass in an object that has a dojos key. And then for that, we'll just say it's an empty array. Okay, so for now, we should still have we have an empty table that has no rows because we haven't added any dojos, right? Okay, cool. So let's get the, uh, the mongoose portion of this going so that we can actually add some dojos to a mongo schema and then retrieve those every time we hit the um, index route, right? Okay. So let's just bring in mongoose up here. Acquire. Mongoose. Okay, and then what do I need to do for you guys who are already in Mongoose? What do I need to do to actually get Mongoose going, get it activated? We have to do connect, right? Okay. So let's just say mongoose.connect. Okay, and then it tells you what we need up here. I don't know why that's kind of cut off. Let me go like that. I don't know why I can't seem to see. OK, but basically what we need is a connection string. So we need to tell it where is the actual Mongo server. And then the next part is going to be an optional object where we can just have some options that we want. OK? So our connection string, does anyone remember what this looks like? Yeah. Something like this, right? Localhost. And then the actual name of the the database that we're, we're using, right? Does that look right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's just call this, we'll just call it mongoose demo. And let's see what happened in our server here. So if I go back to my terminal, notice how I'm getting some warnings. Um, current URL string parser is deprecated. Use new URL parser is true. So in order to remove this deprecation warning, um, we can just pass that into our options, which is the, the second argument there. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. We'll go 
use whoops new URL URL parser set that to true okay oh we're getting some other deprecation warning current server discovery uh wow have you guys also gotten this deprecation warning yeah, yeah, use unified topology every time okay all right well we'll just add that as well I couldn't tell you what that means. I'm not sure what using unified topology means. But uh, but anyway, now we, we restarted our server and we don't have any warnings anymore, so that's good. What else do I need to create if I'm going to interface with Mongoose here? So now we've got we've got a connection to our MongoDB. What else do I need? Start, start your database. Start my what? Database. Oh yeah, actually it is, um, and we can verify that if I open up another terminal here and I just go to a Mongo shell. So we're good. Mongo's running. Yeah. So the thing about Mongo is that as we, you know, as we were working with it yesterday, we were just working through some different commands and things. It didn't really care if if that database didn't exist yet, right? We could, we could say, hey, we're just using this database even though it didn't exist. And the same thing holds here. So I could start using Mongoose to interface with the database without even having anything in that database. So if I open up the Mongo shell again, do you guys think that we'll have a Mongoose demo database yet? No, right? So if I just say, well, let's do show DBs, it's not even there because we haven't yet inserted it into it. It's the same situation that we had yesterday. Okay, so in order to be able to insert something into that database, what am I going to need to use here? I need to create a schema. I didn't think of that. Going back there and start it. Oh, okay. Well, give, the, give them credit. <laughs> Alright, cool. So let's just create a dojo schema. So we'll say const dojo equals new, and then we'll say mongoose.schema. What, what does that look like to you guys? When we say new mongoose.schema. Object-oriented programming, right? So we're creating a new instance of the schema class. All right, so inside that, what we want to do is we want to specify the different fields that we're interested in. So in this case, our two fields are just going to be location and capacity. So if I say location, and then I could specify some different things. So I can say, what type of data is this? And I'm going to say that this is a type of string. And then I can also say whether I want this to be required. Okay. And I want it to be required. And then I also am going to have this capacity here. Type number. And we'll say this is also required. Okay, the second thing that I can pass to this is notice how we have an, an optional options argument. And inside the options uh, object, what I can do is I can say I want there to be timestamps for this. And so that's going to give us the created ad and updated ad that we've been used to with SQL, but we won't have to explicitly handle that. Mongoose is going to handle that for us. Pretty nice. So we'll add this little options object here, and we'll just say timestamps is true. Okay. Good. Now, in order to be able to use this, what else do I need to do? And this is this should say dojo schema actually. What else do I need to do to be able to use this? There's one other little step, right? Mongoose model? Yeah, we need to actually register the mongoose model. Correct. So let's go over here. After where we created it, we'll say mongoose.model. And then the name of our model is just going to be dojo. And then we're going to give it the dojo schema. All right, so that's pretty, pretty
pretty straightforward stuff. Does anyone have any questions about what, what we did there? What's the, what's the model to the class? So the model is, is essentially giving our structure to this specific thing. So it's assigning it. Yeah, exactly. So when, when we are going to use this thing called Dojo, um, <clears throat> it's going gonna, it's gonna to provide all the structure that we want. So it won't let us create a Dojo if we don't give it the things that it needs, right? If we don't give it the location or the capacity. So that's what I, what I was talking about when yesterday we talked about how Mongo is very loose in terms of its rules. We're using Mongoose to sort of impose some structure on us. Yes? Just really quickly, later we're going to have this separate, right? Like that's the whole modular thing because mm -hmm. it's kind of weird to have this. Exactly. Yep. So uh, my question is, I'm assuming that Mongoose.model returns something, right? Is that the reference to the, to the register? Let's log it out. Let's see what it gives us back, right? And we could obviously check this in, in the documentation, but I just want to see what it, what it gives us if we do it here. So it's giving us a reference to the model. <coughs> okay. so, we, so when we modelize this, are we referenced to this model or the schema? You're referencing, you're going to be referencing the model itself. So, so when we want to create a new dojo, you're going to reference the Dojo model, not the schema. The schema is just used to create the model. So once, basically, once we've created the model, we're not really using the schema after that, at least in our, in our code, generally. Okay. So if that gives me a reference to the actual Dojo model, I can, I can set that as a variable, right? I could say const Dojo is my Dojo model. Does that make sense for you guys? The other way that I can get a reference to it is I could also, if I didn't want to do it this way, I could get rid of this and just say const Dojo equals mongoose.model Dojo. So notice how here it says it defines a model or retrieves it. So if I don't pass the second argument, it's just going to give me back the current model that's already been registered. So what if I want half my field model and the other one's kind of uh, free, you know, Mongo or NoSQL standard? If I don't define them and pass, pass them through the model, it'll still add the other field without any... Yeah, well, what you could what you could potentially do is um, you could create one one of these schemas that was basically, for the most part, empty, right. and then you could make it fairly freeform. Like if you only wanted to have timestamps or something like that, you could do that. Do I so it, it def won't it won't require that you have specific things if you leave this part. Would I have to even define the field in the model? Could I pass in like a third field that I want not validated? No, that should, that should work. So that, work. that should work. So yeah. I can validate the fields I want and then pass other fields. As, yeah, exactly. It's kind of free mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right, so, um, so now that we have a reference to our Dojo model, the Dojo model is the thing that we're going to use to create new Dojos. Let's create a route that will actually be able to handle the creation of new Dojos, right? So up here, I'm just going to say app.post. And the route that I specified was dojos. OK, so this time I actually need my request. Why, why do I need my request this time? Not the parameters, the body, right? OK, so the body of the request is the thing that's going to have my, uh, my form data that I'm getting. So when I hit this route, what I want to do is I want to create a new instance of the, the Dojo model. So I can say dojo.create. And then notice that's going to take in um, potentially multiple documents, although in this case I'm only going to create one Dojo at a time. So my Dojo is just going to be taken from the request body. Okay? So inside the request body, we're going to have the fields that we want, which are just going to be the location and the capacity. 
Now, what do I want to do uh, once I create that? It's going to take, this is, this is going to um, either take a callback or we can do it as a, in a promise kind of way. You guys have a preference on how, you, how you'd like to do this? Promise. Promise? promise? All right. Okay, so we can dot then off of that, right? Dot catch. All right, so, so if this returns a promise, that means that once that promise is resolved, I can do something with the result inside this then method. Or if something went wrong, I can, I can run this catch block. All right. So if it all went right, what should I get back in, inside my... Or what do I have to work with in my then function? Create a new. You want to take the information and add it to a new. Save it. Okay, right. Yeah. Isn't it already doing that when I run create? Oh, right. Yeah. So notice here uh, what it does. It says it does a new my model, and then it takes in the document, and then it run it it uh, invokes the save method on. So for every doc and docs, so actually it's already been saved at that point okay. successfully. If we're if we're inside the the dot then. Just redirect the console. Don't redirect to render the. Uh... So yeah, let's just redirect back over to the, to the index page, right? Res dot redirect. Okay, and then what what would we want to do inside the catch block? So let's say that was an error. I'll just call it error. And then inside this, maybe let's just console log. Let's see what the error was, right? We're not really going to do much with it right now, but we at least want to see it. So we can console log the error, and then we're still just going to... In fact, what we can do if we want to make this <coughs> succinct is we can do a dot finally, which means I want this to happen at the end of my promise, regardless of whether it succeeded or failed. So that way I can basically leave this, I can take this whole line out, and then I can just redirect in my final line. But here I'll just console log my error, right? Okay, so finally let's just go, we're going to do a res.redirect to the index route. And then I'll take this out up here, because we're going to do that no matter what. And then if there's an error, I'm just going to console log it. So I could probably just pass console.log here, right? Does that look good? All right, cool. So <clears throat> now that we're doing that, let's see what happens if we try to add a dojo. So if we say Burbank, capacity is 80. Submit that guy. Let's see what happened here. Okay, I didn't get any errors, so it seems like probably something was added. If I open up my Mongo shell here, whoops, I think I already had one. Okay, so we'll say use mongoose demo. Okay, and then we're going to say db.collection, oops, the collection that I have is dojos.find.pretty. There's nothing there. What's undefined? The, the form body is undefined. You, need, you actually need the body parser. But I thought we didn't need body parser. You do. Otherwise, you need um, like Wait a URL minute. encoded. OK, so I'm hearing some different things here. I, I haven't actually tested this out without body parser, but, but Josh, you said that was working for you? Yeah, I've been doing it without body parser. I think it's because you have the, the URL encoded. Yeah, the app yeah. that express that URL encoded. Yeah. Maybe that's it. That's basically. Oh, I see. So, so we would go app dot use, and then we'd say express dot URL encoded. Okay. Oh yeah, extended is true. Okay, so this looks almost exactly like using body parser. Um, the only thing is we didn't have to use that extra module, so that's kind of nice. What is, what is this doing in the background? So what this is doing is it's going to allow us to actually retrieve the form data that's coming in from our form post. 
because so so let's comment it out real quick and then just actually log what rec.body was down here. So inside here, if I console log rec.body, let's see what happens. Let me go back to my terminal. So we'll just say this is the request body. Submit it one more time. So Burbank 80. Yeah. So so that was the issue is that our request.body is actually undefined right now because we weren't parsing it before. So let's add this option in there to do that. Let me uncomment this here. All right, and let's try that one more time. Get rid of this. Okay, cool. So one more time. 80. Okay, if I go back to my MongoDB, let's do the same thing. Okay, now we actually have a, rec a document. And this is good. So notice one thing here is that our location is a string, just as we expected. What happened to our capacity? It's a number now. <laughs> so when I, when I passed it through the form, what was it then? Was it a number at that point? It was a string. It was a string, right. So it's actually been cast to a number by Mongoose before put it into the database. So that's kind of nice. And then down here, I have my timestamp. So I got my created app, my updated app. And then, of course, I've got my ID up here. So now that we're actually entering dojos in, we can very easily go and retrieve all of our dojos on our index route as well so that we can just display them in that table, right? What if Mongoose validation fails? Does it just return an error to the front end and not get Mongoose? Yeah, let's, um, let's actually do that, an, ex an example of it failing, right? So here inside the dot .catch block, we're just console logging what the error was. So let's go back to our terminal here. And then the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to delete this little element from the DOM so we don't even have a capacity here. So let's just delete this guy. Now we just have a location. I think there's one in Tulsa. OK, let's see what we got here. So here we actually got an error, right? Errors capacity, validator error, uh, path capacity is required. So that validated for us. And then again, if we go back in and just see what, what dojos we have, it's still only that one, so it did not add the second one. So it always would route through Mongoose, Mongoose first. Mm -hmm. If the validation is successful, so to speak, then it will route through Then it will actually put it in. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're good to go there. Now in our, uh, inside of our main index route, rather than just rendering right away, what do we want to do? So right now I'm just passing in an, an empty array of dojos, but I actually want those to be the dojos that are in my database, right? Okay, so let's go retrieve them before we actually render that page. So instead of just rendering straight out, let's have a function body here. And then we can do dojo.find. Okay. Now, um, if I pass in an empty up, I'm not even sure that I need this. Can I just do that like that? No. Yeah, with no empty object at all. So basically saying I want to find all the dojos. And then will this return a promise as well? I believe yes. it will, no? Okay. So this returns a promise that again we can we can connect to by running a then method. Okay. So let's just say then, oops, dot then. And that's going to give me, if, if it's fulfilled, that means that I'm going to get this array of documents that match my query. So we'll just say it give, gives me some dojos. And then I could do res.render, again, index, but I want to pass it along the dojos. So we'll put that inside of an object and say dojos. Oops. 
Okay, and then I'll just say dot catch. Again, we want to console log out the error. Um, I'm not going to do anything else than that because I, I don't think we're going to get any errors right now at least, but, but sometimes you're going to want to have a little bit better error, error handling here. But we should at least get our get our dojos. Yes. Is Mongoose involved at all with chats or just posts? So data downstream, does it is it involved ever with validation if you're fetching data? Or do you only use it? Well, there's not there's not really any validation happening. It's just you're just trying to retrieve documents. So Mongoose is still sort of acting as an in-between in the sense that it's it's taking your commands and then running those on your behalf. However, it's not, it's not, there's not going to be validation, obviously, since we're not putting anything in there. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just, does anyone have any, any questions about this? Um, hang on one second here. Let me just get rid of this guy. I think we have like an extra that, and then I can take this out. Yeah, it should be good, right? So does anybody have any questions about this part right here where I've, I've created this sort of context object like we've seen in our other stacks, and then I just put in this dojos. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Normally you give the name and then you put the object in. Mm -hmm. You want to just throw the object in. Yeah, so notice how we could also do this. We could say the dojos key is going to have a value of dojos. Uh -huh. But when the, the key name is exactly the same as some variable that I've already established up here, I can just do it without the, the extra verbosity. Okay. I could just go like this, and that should be good. All right, so let's, um, let's test this guy out. Let's hit our page again. Let's see if we're, okay. So we've got Burbank. Everything's working as expected, right? Let's add some other locations, Tulsa. Oklahoma, I don't know what their capacity is, 50. Orange County. Um, I don't know what these are, but whatever. Um, Seattle, I think they have a pretty big capacity. So let's just say they take in 100 people. All right. That's it, guys. That's the whole Mongoose demo. So that's just, basically, we're only doing two, two pieces of it here. We're creating and we're reading. Yes, Steve. So you don't need a git route for the, the form information, right? Like, you, you're just using the index. Yeah, I mean, we could have, we obviously yeah. could have created a different route where we were just taking the name. That's it. I feel like I've done, I left the index route alone, and I made a git route for the post information. Yeah, it 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 would depend on the project or the assignment that you guys are doing. Sometimes it might Try tell you explicitly, let's create a different route for just you know just rendering a form and doing a new one. Um, probably in most cases you'll see that in the assignments, but you know. It would, it would obviously be very trivial for us to just create another route to have this, right? That wouldn't have been problematic at all. I think I saw another question over here. No? Okay. You guys all pretty good about this? Any clarifications? Let's have some thumbs up if everyone understood that. Yes? All the way up. All the way up. Sean, is it kind of like tilted? All the way up? Good. All right. Good. Cool. You guys are dismissed.